Welcome, welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Bridge Builders of Diversity, where we are bridging the gap between the typical community and the disability community. My name's Sherry. I'm a mother of a child with Down syndrome, and my co-speaker is Roberta, who's a special educator. And today, she's going to um, tell us about invisible disabilities. Which is, this is such a great topic to... To, to discuss while I'm invisible because <laughs> <I'm> my, visible. <laughs> my camera is not working. I'm having to, technical difficulties today. So I am invisible. So <clears throat> most disabilities are visible to the eye. They're something identifiable. A person wearing hearing aids, a person in a wheelchair, a person who uses um a, a, a walking stick because they're visually impaired. Those are all very visible disabilities and we can recognize them. And invisible disabilities are physical or mental or neurological conditions that can limit or challenge a person's movements, senses, or activities. And it can impact that person's ability to learn or to work. So, Students and educators with his hidden disabilities go unnoticed because others are not aware of their condition. Now, just on an aside, I found the bulk of my information from a um, publication by the National Education Association. Um, so this is a publication geared toward teachers. And <clears throat> so uh, one of the things you'll hear is students and educators. This goes for the, the general public because students and educators are part of the general public. Um, Sherry has a really different um, experience with disabilities. Yes, because like, her... like you being invisible and I'm visible. My son has a very visible disability um, called Down syndrome. So the physical characteristics are the almond-shaped eyes, smaller head, the palma crease across the hand, which is kind of cool. Um, they have like a straight line um, on the hand, which is called the palma crease, shorter in stature, smaller hands, um, so and thicker necks. Um, so people with Down syndrome are, are very identifiable. So I have a son who um, people can tell that he has Down syndrome when we're out. Um, so, yeah, it is. It's very different. And yet some people want to touch him or which he doesn't like. I don't recommend that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm frozen right now. We're having a little camera issues today, but that's all right. That's um, all right. We still have good information. Absolutely. And like Sherry is visible and I'm invisible, not all disabilities are visible from the outside. Right. There's physical, mental health, neurological, um, and they're also known as, they're known as invisible disabilities because they can limit or challenge a person's movements, mm -hmm. senses, or, or their activities. I know that I've, I've met people who deal with, um, a lot of people with autoimmune dis disorders um, have chronic fatigue associated with their their um, autoimmune disease. Mm -hmm. So what may not tire the t a typical person, it absolutely exhausts someone who is dealing with a um, with this disorder with this disease and. It makes it really difficult for them to participate in regular activities. Even in the workplace, they may be seen as lazy or whining when actually it's it's just um, a different perception and a different level of, of ability and um, endurance. So, And I, also um, people I, with learning disabilities too. Don't forget people with learning disabilities something that might be perfect, so simple and so obvious to a person who is neurotypical. That's so funny. I just had a conversation with a colleague today about that. She was like, well, I can't believe these kids are having trouble with that concept. I was like, well, 
it's not a difficult concept for someone who's neurotypical. Right. And she was like, oh, right, right. You're right. And then not too long ago, I had a conversation with another colleague about a, a, child, a student who was dyslexic. And she was like, when are they just going to catch up and, and grow out of it? I was like, never, mm. never. My it's older always son. going to challenge. Yeah, my older son language. has dyslexia. Yeah. It's always going to be a challenge mm -hmm. for this person. It's not ever going to be a matter of catching up or yeah. outgrowing it. Um, and, no. and she was like, oh, wow. Yeah, my I, just, old... I guess I just didn't realize. So. Yeah, my older son uh, has dyslexia and it takes him a lot longer to study um, for school and everything. He's in college now, but he needs a lot of extra time. Uh, to just study and be with his books. He does very well in school, but a typical kid might be able to come home, get all their schoolwork done in a couple hours. Now he'll be there for hours on end doing it, but he does very well, so. Right, right. And another invisible disability is autism, mm. especially high functioning autism. That's one that it, you may notice somebody, um, being very blunt or very matter of fact, they might have a real flat affect or a real um, or odd movements or um, sensitivities. That's somebody on the autism spectrum that is high functioning, meaning their intellect is very, very high, but they still um, struggle with a, a sensory processing disorder. They still have difficulty with um, social cues and um, those little aspects of social interactions that all of us have picked up over time as children. They, they need to be explicitly taught that, you know, you don't point out the person's wart or you don't call, you don't call the person sitting next to you fat, you know. <laughs> It, um, Out of the mouths of babes, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. But some of these babes are are adults who just are trying to move through the world, and they they receive a lot of stigmatism. Not stigmatism. <laughs> they receive um, a lot of ostracism and stigma because they they don't move through the social world as as easily as the neurotypical person does. Right. Again, because of their sensory impairments, um, their inabilities to uh, pick up on social cues and yeah. and the like. So moving through the, 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 I'm thinking of the workplace and all of those little nuanced po political interactions that you have in your workplace are very, very difficult for them because they just don't understand and it needs to be explained. Or... Right. And just like the value of this conversation is if you're meeting somebody new or they're in the workplace or you don't really understand their personality, you know, take a step back, observe, um, see if they have any of these traits. You know, they may, you know, some people on the spectrum get accused of being manipulative because they're so blunt. Um, no, that's just the way they communicate, you know, so take a look at those things in your interactions before you make a judgment on someone. And I guess the bottom line really is, Sherry, be kind always. Yes, be kind. Because you never know what someone else is dealing with or Absolutely. what their life is like. So, mm -hmm. hey, if you like our content, be kind. Yes, and like, <laughs> share, and subscribe. Us, so maybe we can get our technology fixed <laughs> yes <laughs> we're trying to do this remotely we live an hour apart from each other so uh, but exactly. we do all right today's we just do, a little glitchy we do, fine. <laughs> we do fine and please like share and subscribe get the word out and even even with nothing else that you take away from today always always be kind because you don't know what somebody else is dealing with 
Right. And Roberta and I also, you can check out our TED Talk. And we also started a podcast called Nathan's Voice uh, that you can listen to on Spotify. That's right. That's yeah. right. We are, we are, on, we're coming to you. We're spreading our, our mission on all the platforms. Yes. So check us out. All right, guys. Thank you. Appreciate everyone. Bye. Thank you.